scorn of all the lands, both near and the far shall scorn you. In other words, this thing is so obvious. It is scandal in heaven. Okay, so he's saying, guess what? Everyone around the world is going to see this. I'm going to bring it to everyone's attention. Why is that? Because now we have additional witnesses. Okay, witnesses. You see, that's dangerous. People don't understand that. When he exposes something on a worldwide basis, the nations that see it become witnesses. And once again, here's the whole thing. Those nations may be not, I'll say, nations under the God that we serve. However, those nations can stand as accusers. Why? Because if we say we are or belong to that particular God, those nations are looking to say, but you aren't acting like that. You understand what I'm saying? They become witnesses either for you or against you, either to lift up a standard towards your God or to tear your God down. All right. And he goes on to say, uh, both the near and far shall scorn you, O besmirched of name, O laden with iniquity. Okay, laden with iniquity. Every one of the princes of Israel in your midst used his strength for the shedding of blood. Hello. Fathers and mothers have been humiliated within you. Hello. Are we seeing any of this? Does this look like the news? Strangers have been cheated in your midst. Oh, come on now. Orphans and widows have been wronged within you. You have despised my holy things and profaned my Sabbaths. Base men in your midst were intent on shedding blood. Oh my God, this is horrible. On shedding blood in you, they have eaten upon the mountains and they have practiced depravity in your midst. In you, they have uncovered their father's nakedness in you they have ravished women during their impurity do you think it is any accident that we just got a guilty verdict plea against someone who committed sexual depravity against women do you think this is any accident these things occur at this time they have committed abhorrent acts with other men's wives in their depravity, they have defiled their own daughters-in-law. In you, they have ravaged their own sisters, daughters of their fathers. They have taken bribes within you to shed blood. You have, <clears throat> excuse me, have taken advance and accrued interest. You have defrauded your countrymen to your profit. Hello? <laughs> this sounds, I mean, this sounds like just open up the newspaper as everything that is going on today. And when people think, oh, we make, we make a judgment, no, this is saying God has already seen and he's made a judgment. You have forgotten me. See, what does he say? The nation that does all of these crimes has forgotten me. You understand what I'm saying? You can call yourself mine, but uh-uh. I am so far from your, I am so far from your memory. All right? And so what does he say? I will strike my hands over the ill-gotten gains that you have amassed. Watch out. And we wonder why we've been having the <laughs> stock market looks like a ride from, what is, what is that place? Kumba. All right. Bush Gardens, up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay, Lo, I will strike my hands over the ill-gotten gains that you have amassed, over the bloodshed that has been committed in your midst, Will your courage endure? Will your hands remain firm in the day when I deal with you? I, Yahweh, have spoken and I will act. I will scatter you among the nations and disperse you through the lands. I will consume the uncleanness out of you. You shall be dishonored in the sight of nations and you shall know that I am Yahweh. This really concerns me. Okay, because Yahweh has the, the charges have been re read, the evidence has been submitted, and he's made a verdict. And now the next session of it is what the execution of that verdict or the consequences of that verdict 
is going to be. When he says, the words of Yahweh came to me, O mortal, the house of Israel is become dross to me. He goes down describing that. And then verse 22, I will gather you and I will blow upon you the fire of my fury and you shall be melted in it. Boy, that sure sounds nuclear, doesn't it? As silver is met, melted in a crucible, so shall you be melted in it. You shall know that I, Yahweh, have poured out my fury upon you. Okay, so we see a lot of things in here, especially when it talks about, let me go back a little bit. Okay, verse number 10. In you, they have uncovered their father's nakedness. Let's go to our Torah portion in uh, Leviticus chapter 18. Leviticus chapter 18. Now, the reason I want to use the um, Tanakh, you need to look at the uh, explanations Okay, on this, the Jewish study Bible, if you have one of those, the explanations on this just, you know, make you put your hand over your mouth. All right, reading the first part of it, the abominations of the Canaanites. I'm reading the explanation now. A list of pro prohibited sexual unions, including incestuous relationships. So you see why Paul, okay, that's what Paul was talking about. And the prohibition of sacrificing children to Molech. These laws, rather than merely being proclaimed, are presented as part of a speech warning the Israelites not to practice the abominations characteristic of the people of Egypt and Canaan, lest they suffer their dire fate. So what did we just learn? In Ezekiel, what did they do? They did exactly the same thing. So how is God going to deal with them? The same way he dealt with the Canaanites and the Egyptians will be exactly the way he deals with Israel, with his people. People need to stop thinking God is not going to spank Israel or that he's not going to spank those who not only represent Israel, but call themselves part of Israel. If we do the same thing that they do, we're going to get the same results. All right. Um, let me see. Let's go down to, okay, uh, the last sentence, really. This chapter is read in the synagogue at the afternoon service of the Day of Atonement, um, a practice for which various interpretations have been suggested. Okay, let's go here and start reading this. Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, speak to the Israelite people and say to them, I, Yahweh, am your Elohim. In case you didn't know, let me introduce myself. I, Yahweh, am your Elohim. Okay, always remember, Leviticus is spoken where? Who? By whom? Yahweh, out of his mouth. Okay, so he's literally speaking to Moses here. His mouth, mouth to mouth. Remember, he talked to Moses, mouth to mouth here. You shall not copy the practices. Okay, copy the practices of the land of Egypt where you're dwelt or of the land of Canaan to which I am taking you, you shall, nor shall you follow their laws. Okay, remember Ezekiel 22, what did he accuse him of? This very thing, okay, practicing what the Egyptians did and the, okay, Canaanites did. Now remember, he spoke out of his mouth, you're not supposed to do that. Remember, we had already pledged all that you say we will do. You understand what I'm saying, okay? Now, let's go back to the explanation on the previous page, verse number three, the practices of the land of Egypt or of the land of Canaan. The Egyptians and Canaanites are characterized in biblical tradition, okay, by rampant sexual licentiousness and perversion. However, this does not emerge from Canaanite and Egyptian uh, literature and is now thought that the biblical writers use this, okay, as a means of stigmatizing Israel's cultural rivals. Okay, and so anyway, going on, let's say, by attributing to them the most heinous crimes, thus they provided moral justification for the displacement of the Canaanites. Okay, so anyway, saying that these charges and everything that they were doing, this is the reason why God was displacing the Canaanites, putting the Israelites in their place, but telling them, if you do the same thing that they do, 
I will kick you out of the land also. So the condition on keeping the land is not doing what the Canaanites did. So if we have some of the things going on in uh, Leviticus chapter 18 going on today, what is God going to do? They say he's going to have to do the same thing. Otherwise, he is not being faithful to his word. So we need to understand what he says. Let's go back to the scripture saying, um, you shall not follow their laws. Verse four, my rules alone shall you observe and faithfully follow my laws. I, Yahweh, am your Elohim. Now, if Yahweh isn't your Elohim, do you necessarily have to follow these? You can say no, but would I recommend you follow them? Okay, yes, I do. Okay, whoever your listen, whoever your God is, who that's your God. You pray to your God, I will pray to my God. You do what your God says, okay? I will do what mine says. Just like that man said, you know, I am not Jewish. I don't have to follow anything that a Jew says. And I said, well, Jesus is Jewish. Okay, Jesus is Jewish. Did you know that? Okay. Oh, yeah, his disciples, all of that. He, he had such of a hatred. Let me tell you something. That spirit rose up. All I was doing was asking someone, do you know how to write something in Hebrew? Nice, beautiful artwork that they had, and she wanted to learn. This man came hollering and screaming at me. Okay, and I didn't say anything because actually the way he was acting, I thought it was this woman's husband. But she was there, you know, looking terrified too. So I just didn't say anything. But it's so funny. Were you you were you there for that? You weren't there. I think uh, uh, Marcia may have been there, and she kind of pulled you and went upstairs. I rem it reminded me of if you saw the color purple. Remember when Squeaky, that big guy, you know who he was, that big guy. You saw him. He was very hostile. Very. very I needed you there, Ed. Uh, Watch my back, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell him back it up, okay? You know. And so the funny thing was, is that I had to remember who I was and where I was, okay, at that point, because I was ready to take his head, but I didn't know who he was. So later I came to her and said, "Was that your husband?" She goes, "No, I don't know. You know who that man was, okay?" <laughs> and so anyway, you know. Yeah, you should have. It was terrible. He was so intimidating. There was so much hatred. Uh huh. Tall, big guy, and everything. And you know, I was ready, ready. You know, but but you have to be nice sometimes. You know. And so what that does is let you know why is there such of a hatred. All I said, do you know how to write this in Hebrew? Not Hebrew. Not Hebrew. <laughs> No evil or quick. You know, it was like, oh my God. You know, but people do have a hatred. They have a hatred, okay, for Jews. And that came out. So then he goes on, verse five. You shall keep my laws and my rules by the pursuit of which man shall live. Doesn't that sound like what Paul said in Romans? I am Yahweh. OK, it's important. You you know, you should highlight how many times he says, I am Yahweh. What is he impressing upon you? These are my rules. This is the name of your covenant God that you are in. OK, I am Yahweh. These are the things that Yahweh, our Elohim demands. Yahweh is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Yahov. OK, Jacob. OK, he is the God of the Hebrews. OK. He goes, none of you shall come near to anyone of his own flesh to uncover nakedness. Underline uncover nakedness. I am Yahweh. Let's go to the explanation. Verse number six. Anyone of his own flesh, the extended family, okay? Uncover nakedness. Uncover the sexual organ. This term is used throughout verses six through 19. Also see uh, chapter 20, verse 11, et cetera, to denote sexual intercourse. Hello. Hello, Noah. Okay. Do we see that? It focuses on the shamelessness of engaging in sexual relations with a member of one's family in flagrant disregard for the repulsion that viewing the nakedness of a close relative was thought to arouse. So do you see how 
in when we see in Genesis that Ham went about bragging about what it was he had done and his brothers went in to cover his father's nakedness. Okay, you understand? All right. In post-biblical terminology, the phrase uncover nakedness, losing its a literal meaning, became the standard term for incest. So uncovering the father's nakedness is having incest with who? His wife, his mother. Okay. And out of that union comes Canaan. Okay. And the word nakedness became a euphemism for forbidden sexual partner or act. Okay. So this is why having a study Bible like this, you could actually, oh, you know, uh, this is fantasy or what, whatever. No, if this is what it means, this is what it means. Okay. So when you see that term, okay, this is why Paul is going crazy. Okay. With the Corinthian church. He says, even the Gentiles have enough sense not to do stuff like this and know that it's wrong. So let's go back up. Okay, uh, verses 7 through 18 are a list of prohibited sexual unions, okay, that extends over four generations with the male addressed in the text placed in the second. All female members of his immediate family who might be the object of his sexual desire during his adulthood are named. Okay, so let's go uh, through this. Verse number 7, your father nakedness is what? That is the nakedness of your mother. Do you see how you allow the Bible to explain the Bible? You understand what I'm saying? You have no problem and no problem trying to justify anything if you just keep on reading. Okay? Your father's nakedness, that is the nakedness of your mother, you shall not uncover. So to uncover your father's nakedness is to have sexual relationships with your mother. Okay? That's the way it is, guys. She is your mother. You shall not uncover her nakedness. Do not uncover the nakedness of your father's wife. It is the nakedness of your father. So if the father takes another wife, even if it is not your mother, you don't do that. Okay, so what was uh, Paul talking about? That you are having fornication with the wife of your father. Okay, you see that? All right. The nakedness of your sister, your father's daughter, or your mother's, whether born into the household or outside, do not uncover their nakedness. All right? So that could be step families, okay, extended families. You understand what they're saying? I don't care if you don't have the same mother or father. You leave that alone. The nakedness of your son's daughter, uh, of your daughter's daughter, do not uncover their nakedness, for their nakedness is yours. The nakedness of your father's wife's daughter, who was born into your father's household, she is your sister. Do not uncover her nakedness. Do not uncover the nakedness of your father's sister. She is your father's flesh. Do not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister, for she is your mother's flesh. It's a shame he has to go through all of this, but this stuff must have been happening, okay? Do not uncover the nakedness of your father's brother. Do not approach his wife. She is your aunt. Do not uncover the nakedness of your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife. You shall not uncover her nakedness. Do not uncover the nakedness, I like this, the nakedness of your brother's wife. It is the nakedness of your brother. Hello, Herod and John the Baptist. Do you remember what John the Baptist said? Hey, it's wrong for you to have your brother's wife. Off with his head. Okay? You understand? So we see when you go through that, you can show somebody, okay, the Torah prohibition. Why was John upset? Because this is a death sentence. Do not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, nor shall you marry her daughter's, her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter and uncover her nakedness. They are kindred. It is a depravity. Do not marry a woman as a rival to her sister. Hello. So after Jacob and all of them and all of that mess, because we see what happened, what does he do? He stops that right there. You understand what I'm saying? All right. And uncover her nakedness. It is the other's lifetime. Do not come near a woman during her period of uncleanness to uncover her nakedness. In other words, 
everything there to uncover nakedness means to have sexual relationship okay with her do not have carnal relations with your neighbor's wife and defile yourself with her oh god america are we in trouble okay do not allow any of your offspring to be offered up to molech and do not profane the name of your elohim i am yahweh remember Okay, we are made in the image of God. A child is what? Made in the image of God. You do not have the right to do that. That's something God never demanded. The molek, okay, it doesn't have to be, okay, uh, an actual idol there because we have the highest level of idolatry that ever existed. We have the idols of self. We make idols out of men, okay? Uh, we have idolatry. I see it, I want it. I'm not happy. What is it? I'm bored. Come on. The idol of self. We will do everything to please ourselves. It is idolatry. Do you understand? So he says, don't offer up your offspring to that. And do not profane the name of your Elohim. I am Yahweh. Do not. Oh. Verse 22, guys. Do not lie with a male as one lies with a woman. It is an abhorrence. So we have abortion and homosexuality right next to each other. Why do you think they're right next to each other? Because one, you're, you're destroying a child. The other one, you're in a relationship where a child could never be created, but you're spilling seed. You understand what I'm saying? So is it is as if when a man spills seed, as it is as if he is aborting that child. Remember what happened with Tamar, okay, and Judah's, okay, sons, okay, with that? So remember that. God is very serious about that, all right? Do not have any carnal relations with any beast, and that doesn't mean an ugly person, okay? It means, an, <laughs> it means a beast, because you have problems, we have problems with people doing that today, okay? And defile yourself thereby and let no woman lend herself to a beast to mate with it. It is perversion. We're saying, ew, ew, ew. But we've seen news reports where people have been put in jail because they've been having sexual relationships with cows, horses, sheep, other dogs, other things. Oh, God. <laughs> You wouldn't think that that stuff was happening back then, uh -huh. but I, I mean, how you, how you said like it's happening now, and then it happened back, back then. then. It's like who who wouldn't know that kind of that's stuff? That's right. That's right. So that's right. As the fathers do, the kids do even worse. Now you need to understand. So we're seeing this today, right? When was this spoken? How many thousands of years ago? Hello. How many thousands of years? Do you understand there are things that have gone on since getting kicked out of the garden? Okay, so these things were going on. God does what? He creates a new earth again, kind of. The flood and all that, he destroys that. And he begins again, right? But guess what? Here we are, and here it is again. He didn't destroy the earth again. He just lays this up, lays this up, lays this up. That's why the blood, okay? That's why a nation, okay, as a whole, repenting for this, okay, is so important. But always understand, what are these symptoms of? Okay, the sin itself is a symptom that you have already left God. So what is ultimately the root of the crime? It's leaving God. Okay. The things that you are doing demonstrate you have left God. Okay. Just like when we're talking about spiritual diseases, that fruit on you, okay, is a sign that there's something very wrong on the inside. If you cut it off without getting to the root, it's going to come back again. And what was the root? A heart not turned to God. If you cannot, if you cannot, okay, turn the heart, you cannot legislate yourself out of these things. You want to know why? Let's stop being so arrogant to think we can because God couldn't. You understand what I'm saying? These are his laws. 
He spoke this out of his mouth and yet we still do it. So why do we think we can pass a law, okay, and that law is going to stop something? That's because we are so arrogant. All right. It's the matter of the heart. Now, I'm not going to say don't try, but ultimately, if you don't cut it off at the root, it is going to find another way to go back. You take take cancer, you do surgery on it, and next thing you know, it's in a place that you didn't do surgery on. You understand what I'm saying? If you cannot change the heart, why aren't we looking at trying to change the hearts of people as opposed to trying to change just their action? Because out of the heart comes the action you take. You understand? And when people lose fear of your God, they will, they will not obey the things that that God said. So the evidence that we have lost fear of God is the fact we have these things going on in our, in our nation. You understand? All right. I'll come down, Brad. Okay. I'll come down. You look kind of nervous there. I heard the microphone over there. Okay. I'll come down. Usa. Okay. <laughs> All right. So anyway, he goes on. Verse number 24. Do not defile yourself in any of those ways, for it is by such that the nations that I am casting out before you defile themselves. All right. Here we go. So in other words, what was the sin of Canaan? Read chapter 18. What was the sin of all those nations that they cast out? Read chapter 18. But what does he tell you? He tells you verse, let's continue reading. Thus the land became defiled and I called it to account for its iniquity and the land spewed out its inhabitants. Hello. Do you understand what he just said? Okay, this is a very important principle. You want to know why? Because in Genesis, what did God do? He spoke to the land and said, what? Spring forth. Okay, spring forth. And what did the land do? It sprang forth. Now he's calling what? The land, heavens and earth are what? Two witnesses. He calls the land to account. You've been let, allowing all of this stuff on? And the land does what? Has enough sense to say, let me get these folk up out of here. <laughs> okay. You know, and so he, he called it to account for its iniquity. You allowing this, you're blessing them. Look at all this good fruit and everything up here. And the land spewed out its inhabitants. Could all these tornadoes? Hello. What about the floods? Come on. Oh, what about earthquakes? Come on. Think about it, guys. Think about it. But you must keep my laws and my rules, and you must not do any of those abhorrent things, neither the citizen or who? The stranger. Okay, so what are we learning here? One law. So guess what? You can be a citizen, but if you allow the strangers that dwell in your midst to do the same thing, it defiles the land. And because you allow it, guess what? When the land starts spitting up, Okay, you're going with it. Okay, so he goes on. No, the stranger that resides among you for all those abhorrent things were done by the people who were in the land before you and the land became defiled. Okay, so let not the land spew you out. Do you understand measure for measure? If you do what they did, the same thing is going to happen with you as with them. So don't let the land spew you out for defiling it as it spewed out the nations that came before you. Although all who do any of those abhorrent things, such as per such persons shall be cut off from their people. So these are correct judgments. Okay, you'll lose your life early. Do we see that? People that do sexual sin and things like that? They usually do. We just heard of a teenager, murder-suicide. Okay, the uh, guy came in. She was getting ready to graduate high school. She broke up with him. He goes in and shoots her and then and shoots himself. Okay, toxic relationship. You shall keep my charge not to engage in any of the abhorrent practices that were carried on before you. And you shall not defile yourselves through them. I, Yahweh, am your Elohim. So these are commands to be holy. 
Chapter 19 begins, Kedoshim, or holy ones. I just want to read a little bit of that. Yahweh spoke to Moses saying, speak to the, how many Israelites? Whole, what? Israelite community. Did he say just the sons of Jacob? Did he say Jews alone? He said whole Israelite community. That means everybody there, mixed multitude and everything are considered what? Israelites are considered one Israelite community and say to them, you shall be holy for I, Yahweh, your Elohim am holy. Is that not what Peter also says? Okay. You shall each revere his mother and his father and keep my Sabbaths. I, Yahweh, am your Elohim. Do not turn to idols or make molten gods for yourselves. I, Yahweh, am your Elohim. Okay, am your Elohim. Then he goes on with the sacrifices, the things that we do. Let's go down for a moment. Verse 11, you shall not steal. Okay, shall not steal. You shall not deal deceitfully or falsely with one another. You shall not swear falsely by my name, profaning the name of your Elohim. I am Yahweh. You shall not defraud your fellow. You shall not commit robbery. The wages of a laborer shall not remain with you until morning. You shall not insult the deaf or place a stumbling block before the blind. You shall fear your Elohim. I am Yahweh. You shall not render an unfair decision. Do not favor the poor or show deference to the rich. Judge your king, kinsmen fairly. Do not deal basely with your countrymen. Do not profit by the blood of your fellow. I am Yahweh. You shall not hate your kinfolk in your heart. Reprove your kinfolk but incur no guilt because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against your countrymen. Oh my God. Hello. Love your fellow as yourself. I am Yahweh. You shall observe my laws. Okay. Then he goes on with other moral laws. You want to know the morality of we're a moral nation. I keep hearing this. We're a moral nation. Well, this is where he defines what a moral nation is supposed to look like. And I'm sorry we have been weighed in the balances and come up wanting. Okay. Because we have gotten away from his Torah. Go to verse 26, 19, verse 26. You shall not eat anything with its blood. You shall not practice divination or soothsaying. Okay? So there is the prohibition against divination or soothsaying. Stop listening to every prophet, Hobo Jones, okay, that comes along because there is a, a spirit of divination in the church. Why do we know that? Because in Revelation, he talks about the spirit of Balaam and the spirit of Jezebel. All right? So, you know, that's him talking. All right, let's go a couple of other things. Do not degrade, verse 29, degrade your daughter and make her a harlot, lest the land fall into harlotry and the land be filled with depravity. One of the first people that I had to witness to, okay, was a, uh, a woman whose mother used to lease her out, okay, to men in order to get drugs and everything as a little girl. Okay, when we came across her, she was so despondent, she was walking up and down the streets. This was on, on uh, Tampa Street, okay. Uh, where I was uh, doing a homeless ministry and everything and found her, all right? And she was walking up and down, thinking about committing suicide. I was able to get with her, to pray with her and everything, find her a place to stay. Back then, it was easier. There was just me and my son, Isaiah. Okay, really. So, you know, so that is what covenant care ministry was all about, helping the ones, 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 okay, at a time. She uh, um, cleaned her life out up. She wound up moving to Arizona, going to nursing school, and she's a nurse now. Okay. It's all about, this is what, this is what Torah is all about. You understand what I'm saying? Taking lives and changing lives, changing lives. It's not about how much we know. It's what we do with what it is that we know. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. That's right. How busy you can be busy doing nothing. Okay. Wind up doing nothing. All right. So he goes on to say, you shall keep my Sabbaths and venerate my, sa my sanctuary. I am Yahweh. Do not turn to ghosts and do not inquire of familiar spirits to be defiled by them. I, Yahweh, am your Elohim. Why do you think we have so many of these things on TV right now? 
okay, that people give glory to. We wind up what? Halloween. Hello, Halloween dressing kids up as what? Ghosts and witches and all that, zombies and all the undead. Come on. You shall rise before the aged and so deference to the old. You shall fear Yahweh. I, you fear your Elohim. I am Yahweh. Oh, I'm hyperventilating. Verse 33. When a stranger resides with you in your land, you shall not wrong him. The, the stranger who resides with you shall be to you as one of your citizens. You shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I, Yahweh, am your Elohim. Can you cut this out? Make about... um. How many? About 400, 500 copies. And uh, let's send this to Congress, please. Hello? And yeah, you know, we kind of laugh, but guess what? This is God speaking from out of his mouth. But And we are one nation under supposedly this God. You shall not falsify measures of length, weight, or capacity. You shall have an honest balance, honest weights, an honest ephah, and an honest hymn. I Yahweh am your Elohim who freed you from the land of Egypt. You shall faithfully observe all my laws and all my rules. I am Yahweh. All right. We have in chapter 20, the first part of chapter 20, concerned abortion. All right. And I'll be ending probably uh, just in a couple of minutes. Yahweh spoke to Moses, say further to the Israelite people, Anyone among the Israelites or among the strangers residing in Israel, who's that? Everybody. Okay. Who gives any of his offspring to Molech shall be put to death. The people of the land shall pelt him with stones. Thank God for grace. Sloppy agape and greasy grace. I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people. Now, understand that. We don't do this today because we have laws in place. Guess what? We have laws in place, right? But God has laws in place too. Do you think there is any correlation to a lot of the cancers going on, reproductive cancers, okay, that are going on, okay, and childlessness that is going on? Hate to say this, ED among men, infertility with women, okay, Okay, uh, problems with uh, 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 reproductive, okay, organs and all of that. Do you think there's any correlation between that and what we're seeing here? Okay, just because man legislates does not mean God is going to change his law. You understand? Man may say certain things are okay, all right. And in the earthly realm, guess what? If they are the judge and they make the law, then we are bound to follow the law. Am I right? If a law is made, who's ever in charge is bound to follow that law. The only way you can do anything is to do what? Change the law. So if they do not change the law, the Supreme Court law remains in effect. And it's like, that's why we need Supreme Court judges. No, that's why we need a church with power. Okay, to legislate the hearts of the people. Because we've had this, how long ago was this written? And we're still going through the same thing, guys. Something has not changed. Okay, and guess what? It won't change because if the hearts of the people are hard, this is a symptom of that. But he says they'll be put to death, early death syndrome. So when you're ministering to people and you see certain things like this, you need to ask a very hard question, a very hard question. Did you consider abortion? Even to a man, even to a man. Okay, see, we look at the female, but we don't address the man. Did you ever ask your wife to have an abortion? Did you ever ask that girlfriend to have an abortion? You understand what I'm saying? Oh, we don't ask those hard questions to guys, okay? Because that could be why he's having health problems. You understand what I'm saying? Because he's the what? Man. All right? Let's go on. He goes on. I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people because he gave his offspring to Moloch and so defile my sanctuary and profane my holy name. And if the people of the land should shut their eyes to that man when he gives of his offspring to Moloch and should not put him to death, 
I myself will set my face against that man and his kin and will cut off from among their people, both him and all who follow him going astray after Molet. And if any person turns to ghosts and familiar spirits and goes astray after them, I will set my face against that person and cut him off from among his people. The people will point to this and point to, okay, well, this one likes abortion or whatsoever. Hello, 1973. Let's go back to 1973, okay? Let's not start at 2008. Let's go back to 1973, okay? Because this thing became law when? In 1973. So it predates any modern anything going on right now. OK, so we need to understand that we have been in trouble as a nation for a long time, a long time. It's very significant. I'm telling you, it's very significant about what's going on in the Korean War, because guess what? We went to war right after World War Two. Guess what? The war wasn't won. It just ended. Hello, 70 years, 70 years. And now they're finally ending it. Uh, talking about it. Okay, you're right, talking about it, which means it hasn't ended. So we've technically been what? Still at war. We didn't win that. Oh, that's a sign. Oh, then Vietnam. We didn't win that. Oh, that's a sign. We're over in Iraq, at Afghanistan. Oh, oh, we didn't win them. Hello. This has been going on since the 40s, guys. You understand what I'm saying? So you're looking at seven, over 70 years that this nation has been on the downward spiral and nobody has addressed it. We address what's convenient to us. You understand? But this thing has been going on probably longer than all of us have been around. Okay? We need to address it. But guess what? This has been going on since the beginning of time. Everyone stand, please. Father God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, we bless your holy name. Father, we want to thank you for what you are revealing to us. Father, this is heavy, heavy, heavy on our hearts, oh, Heavenly Father. Lord, we're asking you for an instruction. How do we change any of this? Can it, can it even be changed, oh, Lord? Lord, we're praying, oh, Heavenly Father. And, and actually, Lord, you've been giving us your grace and mercy. You've been giving us your grace and mercy as a nation. Father, we're asking you, oh Lord, to empower our tongues, oh Heavenly Father, so that when we speak, oh Heavenly Father, it will strike a chord within the hearts, oh Heavenly Father. And Lord, as a witness to you, oh Lord, as we proclaim your word, we are a true witness that what you meant yesterday is still in effect today. So, Father, we thank you that as you are empowering us, oh, Lord, as we come before you, Lord, and repent. Because, Lord, huh, when we read this book of Leviticus, we see ourselves, our past selves, oh, Heavenly Father. And we're grateful and thank you, thanking you that, Lord, for the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, as we acknowledge him as our Lord and Savior, Lord, you are cleansing us, purifying us, so that we become the holy people, oh, Lord, that you desire to represent your name. So, Father, we submit ourselves to you, O Heavenly Father, to proclaim your name, to proclaim your honor, and to proclaim your glory, for you are worthy to be praised. And Lord, I thank you now for these people both near and far, O Heavenly Father. Lord, bless your people, O Heavenly Father, Israel. Lord, continue to turn their hearts towards you, O Heavenly Father. Lord, if there be any that have sickness in their house, O Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, let them be healed, O Heavenly Father. Reveal to them the nature of that sickness, O Heavenly Father, so that they can come to you and be healed. If there are any, O Lord, that have need of finances, O Lord, reveal to them the source of what is going on so that, O Lord, they can be in right standing and the finances that they need come to them. Oh, Heavenly Father, if there are those that have strife within the home, Lord, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, let Shalom now rule and reign within that heart, the hearts of the people there. Turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the children to the fathers, the husbands to the wives, the wives to the husbands, oh, Heavenly Father, so that there be Shalom in your land, oh, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, I just want to thank you and praise you and give you the glory that we even have the opportunity. Lord, I call heaven 
and earth, O Lord, as witnesses this day as to this word that has gone forth. Let it not return void, O Heavenly Father, but let it come with its assignment completed, O Heavenly Father, in Yeshua HaMashiach's name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give God a hand clap. I just wanted to show. Okay. I got a, what is this? Certificate of Excellence is awarded to Pastor Charlotte Israel in recognition of your personal commitment, dedication, and performance on behalf of Total Women Association. Okay. So praise God. Praise. Am I hearing voices in the back? <laughs> I hear voices in the back. Hallelujah. All right. I'm going to go and uh, let's see who's who's online. And I think, uh, Jenny, let's send the, let's send the conference call. Oh, I hear, oh, I see a whole lot of people in the back too. Oh my God. There's a whole congregation back there. I hear voices. Hey, what's up, bro? Uh, Hello, Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.